live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for day three of Walt Wall Cover Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract all the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host, Stu Miniman, our next guest is entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Cask.co, um, technical entrepreneur, now CEO, formerly for Facebook, H-based guru, just all around great guy, great entrepreneur, VC backed, Cask.co. Welcome Thanks to the Cube. Good to see you again. Yeah. So I wanted to get you on theCUBE because I wanted to chat because um, you get an interesting perspective. You've been on Gen 1 of WebScale with, with Facebook. You've seen a lot of action in open source with Hadoop HBase, real time, all the projects. You're also funded, venture back with Ignition, uh, and uh, who else is in there? Battery, Battery Andreessen. Andreessen, big name uh, entrepreneurs. You're also developing some really cool technology in the stack yeah. to scale up. You also have worked with all the cloud vendors, including AWS. First question, what's going on with all these clouds? Who's got what? Who's the better cloud? Where's the technology going? And how as a startup are you navigating this landscape as you play out your funded plan? All that in where 30 do I seconds begin? go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with well, that. Well, let's talk I about mean, Cast. <laughs> before we get to that big question, sure, that's what yeah. I want to I get from you, but uh, take a minute to talk about what you guys are doing at Cast.co. Absolutely. And so we're a big data company, uh, open source big data company, really focused around big data applications. So not just how do you do ingest or ETL or SQL queries and, and just BI on lots of data, but how do you actually drive a recommendation engine? Not just understanding what your customers are doing, but what Amazon on their commercial side does, right? I mean, they kind of invented big data in a certain way from you know, the whole collaborative filtering, machine learning angle. Um, and uh, that's basically what we're focused, is selling on top of these infrastructure um, platforms, clouds, Hadoop um, distributions like Cloudera and Hortonworks, and helping people to build these types of applications end to end. So where in the stack are you guys playing? Lower in the stack, on top of the stack, where are you? We're, we're the unsexy middleware company, <laughs> right? So we're, we're a platform company that really, and, and that's why we're kind of agnostic to the infrastructure people want to use. And so we have customers that have multiple clusters of MapR, Cloudera, and Hortonworks, and they have AWS EMR clusters, and there's a Google Data Proc cluster, and now they're checking out HD Insights on Azure. And so that's the reality for a really major financial services company today. So what right? problem are you solving specifically? So let's say that's your, your world of big yeah. data. All the build, small... Those six different infrastructures, and you're a regulated industry, and you're trying to, let's say you're a bank and you have a mobile app, and you want to upsell a customer, or you want to give them an offer when they log into their mobile app when you think they're likely to churn. So delivering that recommendation is a massive kind of data lake, customer 360 data integration thing where you're pulling mainframe data, CRM data, clickstream data, and this is regulated. So you have governance. And you need to, do it, you need to do it in milliseconds too, right? Yeah, and we're, I'm only just getting the data into the cluster at this point, right? And that's kind of almost where the focus of the market is today in a lot of the world of Hadoop. And that's, I think, what's interesting about big data is there's so much opportunity, so much innovation, a lot of value being delivered, but at the same time, a lot of people are still at the starting gate. John, Jonathan, when you try to kind of parse and figure out this whole cl cloud marketplace, um, you know, the, the landscape out there, you know, I, I try, to, try to start with, you know, where's the data, and you know, what applications are where, and I find there's, there's, there's a lot of difference, you know, the, where Google's going, where, you know, Microsoft with all their apps, and Citrix with them, and, you know, Amazon, and you know, you mentioned data lakes, I mean, you know, there's lots of infrastructure guys that are, oh, I've got this data lake that's going to live in your environment, where IOT fits, so, where do you see the data landscape, the application landscape? It's kind of a big question, but help us kind of squint through the market. So, I mean, I'd say really simply, Cask is a five-year-old company. We've yeah. been almost a 95% Hadoop on-prem company. Yeah, yeah. 2017, we're, we're not an all-in cloud company in 2017, but that's exactly where we're pointed. Um, we see the cloud coming and really disrupting on-premise Hadoop um, for these data-like use cases. The exact same kind of magnitude drop in cost from having appliances and filers and things to store your data to Hadoop, you're having that same order of magnitude decrease going to S3 or Azure's Data Lake service or whatever it is, and now they're announcing more and more stuff to basically turn this flat file storage into a data warehouse. You can do SQL queries in place. You know, All the cloud offerings are now kind of doing that kind of stuff. That's exactly what the on-prem Hadoop uh, vendors are doing. 
It's really, yeah. really interesting. So, so, time. so, so great, great points there. Uh, you know, we've always seen that intersection of kind of cloud and all the analytics uh, there. You know, Google, of course, talks a lot about it. Amazon, a lot of announcements this week. Um, yet, as you said today. You know, a lot of the dupe. It's, it's on-premises. You know, moving data uh, is really tough to do. How long does it take the market to catch up to it? You know, do those data lakes, you know, more and more live in the cloud? I mean, I think it happens super fast because, like, you know, every graph of all the data that's being created, right? Everyone knows it's faster and faster and faster. Well, the data is starting to be created into the cloud, and it's starting to stay into the cloud, and that creates gravity. And so, if half of the data is going to be created in the next two years. Isn't 80, 90% of that data going to be generated in the cloud? That makes 50% of the data now cloud-based. So I think the yeah. time scale and the acceleration and the growth of data, um, which so, is just kind of growing on this, this, this rapid, rapid pace, is going to create all the gravity into the cloud. So one of the things Werner Vogel said, the CTO of Amazon Web Services on stage today was, a lot of stuff is going to be done on analytics, a lot of value. I think he said 80%, maybe 60, 80, might have been 80%, which is, I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You're doing a lot of this stuff with data, a lot of pressure on latency, you got to have really fast performance going across multiple architectures. That's a real hard software problem, and uh, if you figure it out, you solve the middleware, boring, rich, lucrative middleware market if you don't get taken out by the big guys first. But as a startup, you have to go out and, and play with the clouds. Yeah. Give us a take on the, assess the clouds for us. Obviously you got Google, you got uh, Microsoft, you got Amazon. Oracle probably not a uh, fit for you relative to what you're doing, maybe they are. You got IBM with, with Blue Mix. How do you rate the current clouds? I mean, I think in a lot of ways, what's so interesting is they kind of are who they are, and you look at their backgrounds and where they came from, and that's who they are, and you see that's their, that's their strengths, and then that gives them their weaknesses. Microsoft is clearly an enterprise software company. The other two vendors in the space, the other two major vendors in Google and Amazon, they're not traditional enterprise software companies. And so that's perhaps a weak point for them, whereas if you go and talk to, to Microsoft people, there's a massive field organization over there. Well, I'm an enterprise software company. I have a field sales organization. And so it's really natural to align with a company like Microsoft because we almost have the same business model, enterprise software companies. Yeah. And so we have the same approach of go to market. Um, but at the same time, they're an enterprise software company. And so it's slow. And, and they're they have, bigger, they have bigger. long sales cycles. Yeah. And they also have a long, they have this huge back you know, history of products they want to sell, not just your open source stuff. You know, Amazon and Google are really infrastructure companies. But you're going to play. Microsoft is at every layer of the stack. But, you, but, but you're going to play second fiddle. We were talking on the intro, you were hearing it, is that as a startup, if there are new rules of engagement, we are. To be a startup? No, with oh. the cloud. I mean, Amazon, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it might not be a bad thing to be not an enterprise, have a huge enterprise sales force. Agreed. So. That might be right. I just think, but I'm just talking about kind of the strengths and weaknesses of it. But I mean, talk to any venture backed company, talk to all your, you know, all the VC friends that we're hanging out with this week and uh, they're expecting you to build a field sales organization if you're selling to large enterprise companies. And even AWS is. They have a field sales organization. I mean, they're getting there. They have, you know, they eventually break all the rules, right? Eventually they allow people to have yeah. their own clusters, their own dedicated stuff, and all that stuff happens, but. Well, Amazon takes chances, and I think one of the things I like yeah. about AWS, and, and people kind of give them a bad rap for not having a full sales force, but they don't need one per se. They have account reps but they don't need to have the army of guys out there. Yeah, I, cloud is cloud. Yeah, and I, I call them upsell reps at Amazon, right? And I, and I mean that not in a bad way. I mean, that's ultimately how Amazon, I think, is going to drive more and more margin on top of the cloud, where if you're just selling hours and bits, you may have a very low margin business and you can make it on volume, but if you're selling analytics, if you're selling applications, if you're doing more and more enriched services, you're going to have a higher cost, you're going to be able to charge your customers more, you're going to be able to have a much higher margin business. Um, and I think that's why that's their focus, is you know, be the easiest person to, to, to use, be the, the capture of all the market, and then focus so, on really, really, I, I think that's the strength and weakness of Amazon strategy, is they're going to have this, and I heard you talking a little bit about it, which is, you know, we really want favoritism, we really want you to be all in with us. Um, I think the other two are not like that. Well, by the way, because ZDNet, they, can't, well, they ZD, can't be probably. Well, but. ZDNet misquoted Andy Jassy. They kind of made it sound like he was being, you know, very, you know, if you're either in or out. Yeah. That wasn't what he was saying. He was basically saying, hey, we're going to put our priorities where people are all in on it. Every I mean, that's like, natural. Every, everyone's like that, right? Uh, you know, even the Hadoop distributions are like that. We have a very special yeah. relationship with Cloudera. We also do stuff with Mapbar and, and Hortonworks. They don't necessarily uh, mutually exclusive. Uh, but when you create special relationship with vendors, that's good. Yeah. I think they've been, a, Amazon has been, for how big and how many partners and how much attention everyone wants from them, easy to uh, do business with. They've been accessible. Yeah. And I think that's a really hard thing to do. That's something that 
somebody like Microsoft can always struggle with. Yeah. I'd say Google has been a very, very accessible company. Um, really strong on the technical aspects of everything. Really, you know, strong there. I mean, they, they're not known for their. They, they have no feels organization. No, oh, they have no enterprise software. <laughs> no customer and, and support. It's very product oriented. It's very engineering oriented. Yep. But at the same time, you know, one, here's my reality: to 50% of our customer base, they're paying millions of dollars to Natiza, Teradata for fairly simple reporting workloads. And Cloudera is trying to sell them Impala, and other people are selling Presto or the, these other these other things that are four to five times slower for a lot of their workloads. If you can, and Redshift is good, but it's still several, you know, two, three, four x, whatever it is, slower for a lot of these different queries. If you solve that problem, if you do, that's a technical problem, really a performance yeah. problem. That's a huge market opportunity. And so I think that's areas where somebody like Google could actually, if all you're doing is you have bits going somewhere and you're running queries against your Tableau or whatever your UI is, you ultimately don't necessarily care what the commodity underneath is. And so if if, if Google's opportunity to me is, you can create a commodity which is actually better and cheaper, then you have a real opportunity in the cloud. And I, yeah. I think that's... Yeah, I agree, and I think one of the things that, um, the technical aspect is a really critical one, and you can always jury-rig Salesforce and create incentives. I mean, entrepreneurs want to make money, they want to get their product in front of customers, but if it compromises the product, that's a whole nother issue, so there might be some soft dollars incentives to work with a cloud, but at the end of the day, if the product sucks, that doesn't matter. So, I mean, Azure has been getting a lot of ground. So how is Azure and these other guys, clouds, as they cobble together their approach um, versus Amazon's approach of you know, pure services, you know, straight up, is Microsoft uh, cloud getting there? What's your take on, on Microsoft's maturity level? Yeah, the I think there's these pockets of just excellence within that, their clouds and then pockets that are not so much, but it's maturing very rapidly. You know, I think the, one of the things that's great about Microsoft is they've tried to embrace a dual approach of we'll do open source and, and partners and, and all that other stuff and we'll have our own solutions yeah. for it. That's always going to be hard. And you're talking about salespeople, that's where it's going to be hardest. Because yeah. who doesn't want, a salesperson want to sell? I heard a hallway conversation, <laughs> someone pulled me aside and said, look at Amazon is light years ahead of the competition in terms of the cloud and their platform. You agree? So I mean, experience <laughs> matters. They've been doing it the longest for sure at massive, massive scale. But I think that's also one of the Google advantages, which is they, they created essentially a lot of these architectures that born the big data ecosystem, this ecosystem, all, all of these things came from web scale, came from Google's papers, and that changed my life, the big table paper, you know, actually, like those formative papers in the early 2000s yeah. and stuff changed this and, and led to a lot of this, so I think they both have distinct technical opportunities there. Amazon just, if you've been doing it, you're going to have this advantage, and they've built a platform within their platform to continue to rapidly and scale and innovate new products. So and scale so, and speed is huge for them, they're doing it. The culture's working, clearly. You yeah. know, it seems to be working for them, and so the yeah. center of gravity, you know, it just... What's next for you guys? Cloud, cloud for us, cloud. you know, and it's really figuring out, I, I think the, the, the topic in VCs is how do you create large, large long-term companies that are relevant in the cloud era that Amazon isn't going to be able to eat your lunch. And I don't mean that negatively to Amazon. Yeah. Amazon's right to go after the different opportunities. You know, Oracle bought all kinds of companies. They're a database company that bought everything else around them. And why shouldn't Amazon do that too? Yeah, it was nice to see uh, Workday on stage kind of putting a dig at Larry Ellison. Right. They had a hostile takeover with PeopleSoft. Um, but you know, in the open source, the hostile takeover really isn't available. It's really more get the mind share of developers and make money for entrepreneurs through an ecosystem, right? So you know, that's Amazon's play, obviously. Yeah. All right, Jonathan, thanks right. so much for coming on. Jonathan Gray, entrepreneur, founder and CEO of cask.co, not cask.com, cask.co, check them out. Middleware for the cloud, multiple clouds. We're back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>